We got one for your big performance car fans on Muscle Car of the Week this week. A 1963 Ford Galaxy 500 with the factory R code 427. <laughs> This week's Muscle Car of the Week is one that I certainly think is cool. By 1963, NASCAR was really, really super popular. I mean, it's still popular now, but it was really getting more and more popular with people. And they had a seven liter engine displacement size ban that was lifted in 63. So in 62, Ford had a 406 as its biggest engine. For 1963, you could put a 427 under the hood, and that's exactly what they did. And to make uh, a legal NASCAR, you had to sell a similar engine on the street. So they put this dual quad 427 in a passenger car, in this case the Galaxy. Um, the 63 model year is interesting for Galaxy fans because mid-year Ford uh, changed the body style a little bit and came up with the 63 and a half Galaxy, which has kind of a fastback sloping roof line. That was the very first time there was a mid-year introduction for a, uh, a new car uh, announced publicly. It was, you know, Ford actually said it was a 63 and a half. That was the first time that ever happened. But in this case, we've got a convertible. And the convertible is cool because, you know, these are designed to be big, fun, enjoyable family cars and all of a sudden it's hiding you know nascar stuff under the hood with the 427 and the four speed these full-size fords drove really really well on the street so they really didn't do much to them to make them uh you know support the 425 horsepower 427. you could get a, a larger sway bar in the front if you wanted it they've got 11.3 inch drum brakes in front which is a little bit bigger it's basically a police car and taxi cab brake system uh, the rear axle is a nodular iron centered Ford 9 inch. It had an upsized half inch ring gear bolts and they came in a couple of different gear ratios. This one is a 350 to 1 rear gear. But interestingly, all the 427 cars had an open differential, which meant it didn't lock up both rear wheels, so these things left. I imagine quite a bit of, you know, one-sided skid mark burnouts all over the place because both wheels did not spin from the factory. Uh, the transmission is a Borg Warner T10. It's in a cast iron case and Ford tried to make these things live a little bit longer behind the Torquey 427 by incorporating some grooves into the gears themselves, but that proved not to really be too much more effective and the transmission was one of the weak links on this car. Uh, but the real powerhouse was the 427 engine. It was a um, specific block, it's the Ford side oiler block, which meant the oiling system fed the main bearings through a passage on the side of the block rather than the top. And that was significant because on the super speedways, when you rev these things to high RPM all day long, uh, they'd get oil starvation problems and they would fail. So when Ford came up with the side oiler concept, it added a lot of longevity to these things. The two, three, and fours are all very similar, but one definite thing that was different was the hood latch. You grab the emblem in the grill, and that allowed you to open the hood. And under the hood, for the first time, was the 427. And this is a dual quad R-code 427, 425 horsepower, tons and tons of torque. Just a bad, bad machine, uh, tubular, uh, header type exhaust manifolds uh, and not much else on this thing. You got manual steering, manual brakes, crank windows. Uh, you know in NASCAR they ran convertibles in a separate class and that's basically what this thing is. The engines are a 12 to 1 compression V8 engine. Um, they made 425 horsepower as rated by Ford and that came in at uh, 6,000 RPM. They claim to have made 480 foot-pounds of torque at uh, about 3,600 RPM. They've got a medium-rise aluminum dual-quad intake manifold, a pair of Holley four-barrel carburetors sitting on top. And it's kind of interesting that both of those two carburetors have a heat stove-fed choke system. Uh, so that means on startup, you were into both carburetors. You know, a lot of times multiple carburetion is progressive where you use one and then the other at wide open throttle. Uh, but these were, were dual quads all the time. Uh, the cylinder heads were a high flow design. They used a couple different 427 cylinder heads. 
uh, but these had uh, intake valves over two inches and uh, a high flow port design. The camshaft was a solid lifter design, uh, half inch of lift, 306 degrees duration, and with that 12 to 1 compression, these things had a lot of snap. I mean, you fire the thing up and you can hear it's making power. There's nothing lazy about this engine. Another thing that's uh, exclusive to the 427 cars are the wheels. They're a stamped steel 15 by 5 and a half inch Kelsey Hayes steel wheel and you can identify them because they've got a center that's welded. There's very little that is more comfortable than a well-worn in bench seat. And as I sit in this one, it's kind of cool. Not only is the seat part worn and nice and comfortable, but there's actually an indentation here on the passenger backrest from whoever drove this car. They put their arm in the same place I do. Pretty wild. I have one of these cars, a 62 actually, with bucket seats and it's nowhere near as comfortable as this bench. And these things could be loaded up with all kinds of stuff and, and they could have been real luxury liners. This one's pretty simple, uh, but one thing I think is kind of cool, if you look real closely at the radio, there's two circles or triangles in it, one about 7 or 680 on the AM and the other one about 1230 on the AM. And those were uh, stations designated for the Civil Defense Network. So if the, uh, you know, the communists were going to bomb America back in 1963, you were supposed to tune your radio into one of those channels to get specific instructions on how the government was going to tell you to basically kiss your rear end goodbye. It's kind of funny to see how times have changed, uh, or have they? It's hard to tell exactly how many they made. Our research shows that there's only a couple of these things left. And this one is wearing Rangoon Red on the exterior with a red interior. Uh, and it's got a bunch of uh, creature comforts, including that AM radio with the Connell Red triangles on it for the Civil Defense Network. A lot of people think that the 63 Galaxy is the best looking of the family. They, these were basically uh, in 61, you know, 60, 61, 62, those cars were kind of similar. 63 and 4 were kind of similar. Uh, 63 to me is, is one of the better looking. It's got uh, really nice looking trim on it, not too much. Uh, the windshield trim looks really cool. It still has the circular, you know, jet rocket exhaust uh, taillights. And of course the name Galaxy, it's all about the space program. Uh, so uh, there are so many cool things about this car and this time period between the NASCAR stuff, between the space program and the Cold War and, and you know, this interesting period of American history. And on top of it, you got a car with a 425 horsepower, 427, and a four speed that'll burn the tires and put a smile on your face all day long. I mean, to me, it really doesn't get any better. I hope you like checking out these cool muscle cars as much as we like bringing them to you. Uh, we have more shots of this one on our website at musclecartheweek.com. And uh, if you want to get even more information, see our Facebook page. And that allows you to share these cars with your friends who also like cool muscle cars. And we have a YouTube channel. If you subscribe, you won't ever miss an episode of Muscle Car of the Week.